he chose to engage Colby in grappling. Leon Edwards versus Colby Covington felt a little anticlimactic. After the pre-fight drama at the press conference with Covington making comments about Leon's deceased father. Emotional for me. This guy used my dad's death as entertainment. After calling Stephen Wonderboy a paedophile, all while dressed as a blue coat from the American Revolution. Let's just say he did not live up to his promise of taking Leon into deep water. If you watched my previous video, I kind of predicted this outcome. They talk about Colby's cardio and conditioning, but those things are pretty much useless if you don't get to utilize them. Covington failed to get into any sort of rhythm or groove against the champion, and he basically just looked timid throughout the battle. It didn't feel like at any point Colby had the ability to change the tide or do anything really offensive to put the champion in any danger. Edwards made the decision to come out in orthodox stance which I'm not sure why if I'm honest, as his best technique of the bout was that outside low kick from Southpaw. I like Leon operating from Orthodox as a look or a go-between, not a stance to spend any amount of time in, as his best attacking options all come from his left side, but it seemed to work in confusing Colby, who ultimately offered nothing outside of a couple of high kicks attempt and a left hand in the opening stanza. We all knew what Colby needed to do to win this fight. He needed to put pressure on the champion, volume strike and wrestle. It became clear that Colby was in for a long night when he instead decided to stand the back foot and circle on the outside, allowing Leon to come forward and pick away very slowly as he does. They call Leon a sniper, and for me, I wish he'd be a bit more of a machine gun. Payback time. It feels like if Leon just pulled the trigger, he'd absolutely be murking people. He's big, strong, fast at the weight, he reacts well, he's got fantastic technique, he's just, how can I put it, very conservative. This leads to a feeling of frustration as a spectator as it feels like he's capable of so much more. But if you've been a Leon Edwards fan for long enough, you know what you're getting. At 32 years of age, I think nine years in the UFC, it probably ain't ever gonna change. Colby had success with his crosshook and caught Leon on several occasions, but it did next to nothing to deter the champion from stalking his prey, as it was pretty evident there was a big power disparity. Leon could hurt Colby and Colby couldn't hurt Leon. This then circles me back on my never ending loop of frustration. Leon's the bigger hitter, he can take the shot. So pull the fucking trigger baby. <laughs> Leon was failing to capitalize on open side attacks when he'd have Colby circling to his right. Colby's in southpaw, Leon's in orthodox. That open side body kicks there all night and Leon could have punished him with it, especially when Colby had his back to the wall, but the kick was few and far between. Luckily I'd set my alarm and woke up with the missus to watch the fight. So I was ready, alert and had a coffee in hand instead of the poor bastards that had sat up all night battling to keep the eyes open as Colby's skirting around the outside of the cage like a lost lamp. He just didn't have the artillery to change the course of the fight, so we were all just waiting for the big Leon Edwards headshot dead moment that never came. The takedown attempts were pretty awful from Covington, with him reaching helplessly from a mile away on a couple of occasions without much of a setup. Leon is very good at making people feel the void on the feet and he does it in the gym. It's like he hits you, doesn't follow up, and leaves you thinking about how much what he just did fucking hurt and you spend ages hoping he won't do it again until you eventually pluck up the courage to lead an attack. Sometimes he snipes with a perfect counter off your lead that makes you question your life choices. But there's also plenty of times he gets caught and looks like his feathers are ruffled and he'll stand up a little bit too tall, reaching his arms out and out of position. Colby just didn't have the courage to take the damage required to force that issue and put significant volume on the champion. That leaves a bad taste in the mouth of the fans after he came with such disrespect in the pre-fight build-up. He talked the talk and he couldn't walk the walk. I did predict that the layoff would play a part in Colby's demise. I think Colby's getting a bit older and probably thinking a bit more about his long-term health. It sounds stupid, but when you've had the wars, when he's had his jaw broken, when he's taken significant damage in previous fights, then he's down on the rounds, staring down the barrel of a Leon Edwards head kick. Do you just ride it out, make your money, and go home safe and sound? Or do you take a big risk and potentially get banged out? Rocky made him remember how much fighting actually sucks. <laughs> Everything hurt, and Colby just stayed in that limbo of uncertainty of how much he actually wanted to be a world champion. The first successful takedown from Colby came in round three. He shot a double to his knees, managed to get Leon to the fence, and Leon made a boo-boo by trying to step over to take Colby's back. His own overhook blocked him, and Colby used to shelf Leon's hips to the cage, and then, and then ankle picked the other leg to bring Leon into close guard. Leon looked annoyed for a moment, knowing he messed up, but he got himself quickly to half guard, used his knee shield and frame to get himself back to his feet. This is gear one wrestling for Rocky. Honestly, I yawned in this sequence <laughs> with my missus looking slightly concerned because I've seen him do it a thousand times. Rocky then shot for his own double, turning Colby off the cage to complete it just to prove a point. Colby got up pretty quickly and it was a nothing moment. If you're still doubting Leon's wrestling capabilities at this point and needed that takedown to prove his credentials, then I don't know what more I can say to you. Did it show he's gonna come out and wrestle a Hamza or a Shavkat and dominate? No, he's just a good wrestler. That makes him 
questionable decision, which you could say about his overall game. Like the unusual stance, which is with no follow-up attacks to the open side. With Colby finishing the fight on top, it added some further frustration to the bout, which could be heard in the voices of the commentary booth. Rogan and Cormier rattling on about how this is not a good look for the champion. This comment was about as useful as having a bucket with a hole in it. <laughs> Colby had done sweet effort all night. He knew he was down on the scorecards. We all knew he was down on the scorecards. He needed a finish. And for the most part, he'd been content to survive in the bout. And sometimes can't blame him. But you've, you've talked a lot of rubbish, mate. And you're getting paid a few million quid. So please just take a risk and let Leon get his sound bite with a <laughs> knockout finish headshot dead. The only reason Leon ended up on bottom is because he'd chosen to grapple with Colby. Another questionable decision from the champion. But with literally no danger from Colby throughout the whole bout, Leon clearly safe in every department. Why not? The initial takedown came from the exact same sequence in Usman vs Leon 3, where Leon had worked his way up from a double leg, he blocked the hook against the cage for a back take, then pummeled his arm in for an underhook. This time, instead of the disengagement that he took in the Usman fight, he chose to try and take Colby down, which he did successfully. Where the decision took a turn is Leon tried for a back take, but didn't have a secure hook, with Colby threatening to turn on top. He ended up transitioning into a triangle with a potential armbar there, but Colby defended it and attained top position. Leon then seemed content to ride out the clock knowing he'd won a decision. I think the fans were frustrated, the commentary booth were rather deflated it sounded like, but it was another successful defence for the champion and I feel where Leon really made it count was his post-fight interview. Joe Rogan came into the cage to ask Leon a couple of questions and yeah, and he handled himself very admirably. I think everything he said was picture perfect. If I was Leon's PR guy, I couldn't have been happier. He came across really well, humble in his victory, Still managed to compliment Colby as a fighter, but just called him out for being a shit human being. I like how coach Dave Lavelle was still trying to instigate a fight behind the scenes and the champion had to turn around and tell his head coach to just calm down for a minute. If you're a Leon Edwards fan, he got the win. You're going to be happy. His reign of champion is going to probably continue for at least another six months until he, his next defence, which is looking like it's probably going to be Belal because... Shavkat has no personality, and despite being the most worthy contender, in my opinion, with regards to his resume, with intrigue and excitement, like that Shavkat match for me, brings a lot of excitement to the table. And something about Rocky, what I think we saw in the Usman 2 fight with a head kick knockout, it's like Leon needs a really good fighter to bring the best out of him. I think when he's able to coast, he will always coast. I cornered him for the Nate Diaz fight, and he was schooling him, but it still felt like in that fight, just put you foot on the gas. Had he pushed for a knockout, he probably wouldn't have had that moment that kind of overshadowed the bout where he got rocked in the dying 30 seconds. But again, Rocky being Rocky, he's been doing this for that long. I don't think it's ever going to change. He is who he is. That's just how he fights. So I think it's going to take an exceptionally gifted fighter like a Shavkat, like a Hamzat, someone who's going to really bring the fight to Rocky, which people thought Colby could do, which is something that I didn't think he was going to be capable of purely because of the size difference. He's a much smaller man than Rocky. Not in his prime, a little bit past it, had wars, there was a lot of things going against Colby that I just felt like were going to produce the performance that what we saw. I thought he might take a few more risks with it being his last shot to win a world title, but he didn't. He, he didn't take the risks. He didn't take the gambles. Whereas I think Shavkat, 18 and 0, 18 finishes, six foot one, big reach, strong wrestling, good striking, solid chin, also young, up and coming. He's going to take risks. He's going to take gambles. He's going to force a a pace against Rocky and probably bring out the best version of Rocky we've ever seen. I think that is a Really, really exciting fight. If it doesn't happen in the next fight, I think Rocky can beat Belal. I think he showed probably the best performance he's ever put on in that first round against Belal, where Rocky actually looked like he could murk anyone in the world, where he was head kicking Belal and rocking him and just looked like an absolute assassin with bad intentions, which I'm hoping we could see again if, if that match was to happen. But then that Shavkat fight is one that I really want to see. And then Rocky's probably looking at bowing out not long after that. Really worthy challenges and exciting fights in that division for him and to put his legacy as the best welterweight of all time. I think that is within his grasp. Thanks for watching the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Who should Rocky fight next? What did you think of the fight? Do you think Colby's done? Do you think he should retire? Hit me down below. Pro striking out. I'll catch you later.